I don't know where the mic is. So, there is a question. Don't talk uh, to me, talk to whoever has the mic. Yeah, go ahead. All right, uh, so I want to refer a little bit back to what you've been saying at the end of your lecture. Uh, isn't it like the people adapt to the certain political system, economic system they live in, isn't that they adapt to the environment? Uh, shouldn't the economic system go first, let the people adapt and um, make the pursue their own self-interest and uh, just if people don't in, in the best way that the, the system provides them to. Yeah. So. People don't automatically pursue their self-interest. If they did, we would live under laissez-faire capitalism today. It's in their self-interest to have capitalism, but they don't. We came close to capitalism in the 19th century, and yet we turned our backs on it. We rejected it. So the economic system does not determine who and what you are, and doesn't determine what you will advocate for or against. People in Chile right now have done very, very well under an economy that's relatively free, and have twice now voted for socialist president committed to undoing all the economic progress that they have made. And they voted for her. So it's not deterministic. We're not determined by our economy. We're determined by our, by our deepest beliefs. And those deeper beliefs don't have anything to do with economics. They have everything to do with morality. So what? So I have to sacrifice. Sacrifice is good. Sacrifice is noble. So I'll make less money next year in the name of some social you know, social utility, some socialist grand plan. People, people, people commit suicide every day, spiritually and materially. So you're not, just because you establish capitalism somewhere doesn't mean anybody is going to come and doesn't mean it's sustainable at all. You need the philosophical foundation for it. So why are Americans voting for higher taxes, more regulation, more controls every single election? Why do they vote for it? Sure they have the power. Sure they have the power. If there was a movement in the United States to move away from statism, look, we get the politicians we deserve. You can blame politicians for all your problems. That's a huge mistake. We get the people we deserve. We choose them, we elect them, we don't run, we don't participate, and we get the people who represent the people. Politicians are chameleons. They don't have, a, they don't have ideas. They reflect back what society wants them to do. That's what they are. They don't come up with original ideas. They're looking at you and saying, oh, I think you're like a tax cut. Oh, that person, he doesn't mind increasing his taxes a little bit. That's what they do. If we all believed in capitalism, we would have capitalist politicians. But we don't. If you do survey after survey in the American street, I, do you want smaller government? Yes. Are you willing to cut one, two, three, four, five? No, 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 no. I mean, people don't really want to cut anything. Do you, do, you want, uh, uh, do you want to do away with the Federal uh, Drug Administration that, that checks our food? No, because I don't trust them. I don't trust free markets. Nobody trusts free markets. So it's a much more fundamental battle. This is why I tell libertarians, as long as you just stay on the economics, you will lose. We will lose. Because people don't care that much about economics. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brutes.